Join me as I try to learn how to use figure variables for the first time. I want to try apply them to our illustration system. I don't know if this is a use case where variables are actually useful or not, but I guess we'll find out along the way. I just want to learn how to use them, get familiar with this new feature, and I thought I might as well record the process so you can come along with me. Right now I have a component property set up for the level of illustration, so 3, 2, 1, but also another one for the background color that it'll appear on. So I think if I keep the component property for the level and use a variable for the color instead, maybe that'll work out for us. I don't want to mess with the system I have set up, so I am just going to like duplicate this up here. And I'm just going to add on to this component and call it variable test for now. Okay, so I think I click here first, local variables, and let's create a variable. We're going to create color. Now, as you can see, we haven't done any sort of setting up of variables in our design system yet. Otherwise, I might already have all of our colors as variables. So I guess I'm going to have to set that up now, but I will just focus on doing just the colors that um, exist in these illustrations. You can see all our colors are styles hanging out at the side here, but I think that we have but used in this illustration. I think um, here we can see here. So I use the 100 level. Ooh, that was nice. Did you see how it automatically put it into this like grouping for me because I did the slash in the name. Anyway, let's pick our blue 100. It would really be nice if I could just like continue adding in this list here. Am I really gonna have to click this every time? Okay, this is taking forever. Surely someone has done a variable styles. Here we go. Styles to variables. Let's try this. I hope that I didn't just screw up our whole design system by clicking that. <laughs> It seemed to, well, almost work. I'm not sure why it's got some colors in other groups. Hmm. <laughs> oh, I see there is a flaw in our naming here that didn't like affect anything in um, styles, but clearly it has for variables. How would I move this into a different group? What if I just do that? Boom, okay, we'll just fix these up then and then this will be our colors. That's definitely gonna be faster than me having gone through the whole thing myself. Cool, all of our colors set up as variables. That was, thanks to that plugin, that part was easier than expected. Um, let's go back to this collection one then and I'm actually gonna, can I like, yeah, just delete all of them? Okay, I'm gonna call this collection illustration theming. I don't know, I might change that later. Okay, here's where I wanna start messing with modes. We'll call this one outline and the value we'll pick for this. Okay, how do I pick another variable to reference here? Ooh, in libraries, okay. Why is that out of order? <laughs> I might need to go back in and fix that. Okay, so I know that our outlines are blue 800. So we'll put that there. And because it's highlighted like this, I can tell that that is using the variable. So I did that right. That's good. Let's make another one for 500 accent. I believe that's what this color is. Yes. And we'll pull from the library again, and that will be blue 500. Then we'll have 300 accent. Ooh. I maybe shouldn't be using that term in this because I, I might change. I'm going to say dark accent, light accent. Into libraries that will use blue 300 and then watercolor. Ooh, this one might be interesting. This was where we might find it breaks down because our watercolor has a pass through set to it. Um, it is using a style though, so I don't know. Let's see. But yeah, that is using blue 200 and we'll call this blue. Okay. And then I'm going to set up another mode called yellow. And my intention is that, oh wait, can I change the order of these after the fact, I wonder? Hmm. I know that eventually when you get into modes and things, it'll default to the first one. So I actually might make this, I'm going to call this one white and this one blue. And then we will tweak this slightly. I think the only thing that changes, because what I'm trying to do here is name these based on what color background it goes on. Oh, that's not right either though, is it? Mm, my brain is breaking. You know what, let's not worry about it for now. <laughs> if nothing else, I hope this video is just relatable if you also went through the same struggle, setting up variants or like wrapping your head around them for the first time. Okay, we'll pull into the yellow versions there. And I know it's weird to see blue in here when it's yellow, but the outline itself does actually stay the same throughout. Okay, before I go any further, I want to attach these variables to the, I don't know what language to use here. Um, the things, I'm going to use the variables to color things in. Ah. Okay, so instead of blue 800 here, I want this to, um, can you just go away a second? I want this to be pulling from, how do I attach the variable? 
there it goes. So maybe I can do it up on this level. I click here. Oh, I didn't need to, it was on this list. I just didn't see it properly. <laughs> you were probably all shouting at the screen just then. Okay, let's attach outline to it. So it's gonna look the same, which is our intention. Okay, then for the accents, the dark accents, we are going to attach that to, oh, it's because I was, would have been scrolled down into the thing. See here, the circles are the styles and the squares are the variables. So here I wanna click on dark accent. Then here, we'll attach this one to light accent, the watercolor. Let's see if this changes the pass through it all. Mm, good, okay, well that worked out well, cool. And then for the whole thing, where do I set its mode? I think it's here. Yes, okay, so it's on auto at the moment. Let's give this a try, shall we? If I drag out an instance of this component, can I use this here to switch? <gasps> I can. Wow. That is pretty exciting. Let's apply it to these ones too. This gets set to outline. The accents are all the same color, so that gets set to dark accent and the watercolor. Get set to watercolor. Ooh, here we go. Here I might need, yes. On the small illustration, the colors are actually flipped a little bit. Watercolor is still watercolor, so we can add that in there. But let's open up our variables panel and add in a variable for L1 outline, which yeah, will be different for each color. What level is it? I think it's 500. Yep, yeah, so that'll be blue 500, yellow 500. I do kind of wish it would like see what I'm trying to do here and default me into the right place, like autocomplete in a way, that would be really cool. And then we'll also add L1 accents because I'm pretty sure they're all the same and they're always gonna be blue 700. Let me just confirm that by looking down at a few of these. No, okay, so they are always the 700 level of whatever the color it is. Lucky I checked. Okay, let's close that. Let's go in and apply this up here. Um, oh, I should just be able to do it here, shouldn't I? So blue 500 will become L1 outline, blue 700 becomes L1 accents. And then if we change this to an L1, <gasps> oh my God, because the mode was already set to green, it just changed it right there for me. Nice. Okay, that is exciting. That's very exciting. Let's go back to our L3. Now, the real test in my understanding of this comes in trying to figure out how I can do essentially three modes of this. So I'm gonna have color mode, which is what I just set. So all the colors I just set are for how they should appear on colored background. When they're on a white background, the watercolor is actually one level lower. So this is blue 100. And on a dark background, I mean, everything kind of changes to make things stand out. So how can I do some like mode combining here? Hmm. I was hoping that what I could essentially do was take this colored set and then apply a change based on um, if it was on the white or the dark background. But I have a feeling I might need to make like blue light background, blue, blue background, blue dark background. Does that make sense? Let's think about this though. How could this work? Can I add groupings to these? Can I do that? No, that doesn't seem to create like an extra layer of grouping here for me. What does that end up looking like in here? Okay, let's put that back. Okay, let's try make a new collection. Okay, so on a white background, it's blue 800. On a colored background, it's blue 800. And on a dark background, it's white. I could then come in here to illustration theming and instead of using outline here, I actually use, here we go. Okay, that worked, but I think that only works because that is the same case across all of the illustrations, uh, all of the different colorways. They all use blue 800 regularly and then swap to white when they're on a dark background. I wish I could control it to say like, move down a color level, if that makes sense. So instead of pulling from 300, it pulls from 200 or whatever. Unless I set it up like this, let's say blue watercolor and then that's right, I think it should be 100 on a white background. Okay, on a colored background, 200, dark background. What have I got it set to here? 500, I think. And that means coming back into illustration theming, watercolor is set to blue watercolor. Ooh, did you just see it swap out? So now, colored background, white background. We might be getting somewhere. Basically, I set them all up in here and I shouldn't have, but hey. <laughs> What else changes about the watercolor on dark? Um, actually, it looks like we kept 
other things the same. Like we're using 500 and 300 for the accents there as well as here. What's changed though is the watercolor. What about on this little guy? Okay, so this one needs something special just like it did in the other one as well. Right, let's add another variable for this then. Okay, so the L1 outline will now use the L1 outline and the accents will use the accents. Let's see if that worked. So we'll change this for our L1. There it is on a white background, a color background, see the watercolor got a bit darker. And then on a dark background, it all swaps out. I'm just gonna drag in a random block here to test that out with. Yeah, I think that looks how we want it to. So now basically I just need to duplicate this for the other three colorways and we'll be done. Three hours later. And I'm just gonna look along and see where I applied the blue one and go apply the yellow one as well. And to do this, I'm just gonna like look along and see where I applied those variables to the blue one and apply them to the rest. Okay, moment of truth. Did this complicated system of variables work? Can I reduce what this component looks like sitting here in our design system, all of the different variants that we have? Can I reduce it down to just three? Let's see right now. So this is our blue. We can change it to yellow, we can change it to red, we can change it to green, and all the colors swap out. Let's check the other levels. Green, red, yellow, blue. Level three, yellow, red, green. And then if we move this over here and have it on a white background, and also can we put it on a color background and have the watercolor go darker? Wow, okay, I think we did it. I honestly think that means that I could get rid of all of these. I can just have this component and actually remove this component property completely. Three variants for the different levels of illustration. And then we change out the colors as we please down here. My concern is the mess that I might have made in this file in doing this. Like say I have this rectangle and I want to apply our green to it. I come in here and now I've got illustration theming sitting before all our colors and then we've got the blue, red, green, whatever in here. And that's, yeah, that's not so great. I think what you can do is like, I think you can hide it from appearing in the list by putting a dot in front of it. Is that true? Let's see if that turned out. No, it's still there. It's possible that might hide it from being published, but still that doesn't solve the problem of it being annoying to work in in this file. I wonder if I can change the order, like make colors be the first collection, you know, that would be ideal. Cause even if it's still in here, but it's hiding at the bottom. And so you don't, you know, it doesn't get in the way of the rest that might be okay. So the verdict is yes, I could greatly reduce the number of variants I have of my illustration components. It can operate as a system just like this by using the variables to change the color, but was it worth it? I'm not sure yet. If I can find a way to keep that collection list of variables out of the way and not appearing at least at the top of the list as we work in this shared design system file, it might be worth keeping it around. But hey, even if we don't, this was fun to get to know variables. I always find that I learn best when I do something hands-on that's like applicable to my real work. That's how I learn best and how I can best learn how to operate the feature. And I definitely feel like I've had an introduction to it after this. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me on this journey of discovery. Are you using variables yet in the work that you're doing? doing? How have you got them set up? What would you recommend I do differently based on the setup that I ended up creating for this illustration component? Let me know down below in the comments. Let's have a chat about it. In the meantime, in case you missed it, I actually attended Config where they first announced this feature for the first time and I made a vlog of the experience that you can go watch right over here. It's a pretty fun one. So I'll see you over there.